great to see so many people here to make clear that the EDL will not be allowed to march or rally in the East End and if they try to do so then we will stop them from doing it. This October, as you'll be aware, is the 75th anniversary of the Battle of Cable Street when hundreds of thousands came out on the street to stop fascists from marching in the East End. 25 years ago I was involved in organising the 50th anniversary and this year we see the 75th. And the message to me that stands out from Cable Street is this, that it won't be the Home Secretary who stops fascists, it won't be the courts and the judiciary who stops fascists, it's people getting organised themselves and saying that we, ordinary working people, trade unionists, will stop you coming through our streets, we will not allow you to bring your hatred into East London or anywhere else and we will prevent that from happening. And I have to say that the argument that was used by some people that the cost of policing is a justification for banning marches is a naive mistake. We cannot allow our marches, labour movement marches, marches and demonstrations against the cuts to be banned on the grounds of cost of policing. We demand the right to protest. We demand the right to defend our democratic right to protest. And we need to make that central to this debate. And one thing that I would call on councillors here to do is to resist those cuts because those cuts breed division and allow races to foster. The only way forward for working people is to unite black, white, Asian, Muslim, Christian, whatever, and those of no religion. We need to stand together against the cuts, against austerity, and against the racism of the EDL and the BNP. This is a start. Let's go forward from here. And on the EDL, it's time that they acted. They want to classify the EDL as the far-right extremist organisation that they are. And I want to talk about the hypocrisy of the Home Office. We represent members in the Home Office and we recently negotiated an agreement with them and they've refused to employ anyone in membership of any group or organisation that promotes hatred in its philosophy, aims, principles or policies based on gender, race, disability, sexual orientation, religion or belief. And that's part of our campaign to get fascists banned from the civil service. But the Home Office should not only do that, they should ban the EDL from the streets from operating. Not because of law and order, not because of money, but because they promote hatred, because they are racist. And let's be clear, there is no comparison between those who attack equality and those who defend equality. Us who have the right to demonstrate defending equality are not those who need to be banned. David Cameron said multiculturalism has failed and I think if we look around us today we can see this as a victory for multiculturalism and a victory in smashing the EDL off the streets. It wasn't the ban that won it today, it's our unity just like we drove them away last year in June. As part of his attack on people, David Cameron planned to, to cut hundreds of thousands of English language classes so that he could say to the people who we blamed for not integrating that it was their fault. Last week we learned we had a massive victory when the government did a huge U-turn. A broad campaign involving workers, trade unionists, the Somali, Turkish and Bengali community has fought this back and it means at my own college now 1,500 people can come and learn English and around the country tens of thousands. Racism doesn't come out of nothing. Poverty breeds racism and this government is creating a climate that is increasing poverty for the children I teach and the families I work with. In the space, in the vacuum, the political vacuum that's been created, trade unionists, working class people, the community of Tower Hamlets need to be creating an ideology, a base of ideas that will actually fight the racism of the EDL, fight the ignorance and encourage the community in which we live. The future of humanity is all of us working together. And if you want to know what fascists really think of us being here together like this, we only need to look back to the nail bombings. The nail bombings which blew London apart, which were an attack on the African Caribbean community in Brixton, on the Asian community here in Brick Lane, and mortally on the LGBT communities in Soho. That is what fascism really means. That what that's what it stands for. And that is and we marched then and we stood together with all communities.
communities in Brick Lane, Brixton, Soho and with the trade union movement we march through London and that is why I'm proud that we are standing here together today. We know that if they are able to do what they're trying to do with the Muslim community today, stigmatise, attack, be violent, it will be other communities tomorrow. And it's really important that we stand you know, shoulder to shoulder with our Muslim brothers and sisters to make sure that they are also protected against these fascist and violent opinions.